Hi folks, I'm Jeffrey Fox. This is an introduction to two um, modules. One on the automobile industry and the transportation industry, which is transforming into the mobility industry. And the other is a new sort of new industry, which is growing up called the transportation systems industry and consists of the whole control room, which is going to manage these collection of self-driving electric vehicles and autonomous vehicles. And it's going to plan what they do and things like that. And uh, there are two uh, video sets slash modules. And this introduction actually applies to both of them because it covers a summary of both of them. So let's get going. Thank you very much. Okay, so here's the, there are two basic slide sets. And if we look at these slide sets, we see that the um, automobile industry is being changed in two ways. Autonomy, which is the AI for self-driving cars and things, or, or autonomous self uh, drones, and electricity, or electric power, which is gr rapidly replacing um, internal combustion engine as, a, as the preferred mode of transport uh, propelling cars. And it's sort of, when we look at this, uh, what was going on today, we see a, a really good example of how, how it's very hard for large industries to change. We have General Motors with um, around um, 200,000 uh, employees over the last few years. And Tesla, which currently has around 42,000. And the market value of GM Wells is actually now about a third of the value of Tesla. One third of Tesla, which has one quarter of the um, employees of GM. So per employee, GM's were 10% of Tesla. And now the way GM is trying to compete on the, at least the self-driving car area is they bought a company called Cruise, which is actually a pretty reasonable company. And um, it's trying to compete in that way because it is very hard when you have a giant organization full of fiefdoms and, and focused on important issues such as ensuring that particular car names like Buick or Pontiac or Chevrolet survive. Then that's not so easy to focus on. Well, unfortunately, your core technology is just changing underneath you. And uh, we, we will find actually throughout this uh, course that the funding um, in, in some way, maybe even helping to fund, and then buying startup is an important transformation strategy. So that's the cruise approach. Tesla is a startup, which uh, either nobody wanted to buy or declined to get purchased. And if you uh, look at what's needed for autonomy, you'll find um, sensors, uh, computers, algorithms, and software are all needed for obvious reasons. And another thing you need is experience. Now, self-driving cars has the advantage, it's relatively clear how you get labeled data. You just drive the car, and you see what humans do. And uh, at least on the average, what humans doing, uh, well, you can see if it works. I and mean, if they're still alive at the end of what they do, then maybe they didn't make too many mistakes. Uh, if you look at what's really holding this up, it's probably the algorithms, uh, to write algorithms that really can cope with uh, driving cars in, in uh, two feet of snow, then that's not so easy. Even today, driving cars in bright sunlight with uh, without any handicap from the weather is actually non-trivial. Although there are certainly um, entries into that, into that uh, case. Uh, the algorithms are bound to improve because they, we know how to, we know how to improve them. And um, there's also gonna be new work in new sensors, new computers and new software. Uh, the sensors are probably not going to revolutionize themselves, but they are going to get cheaper, lower power. And the computers are going to get more powerful and more optimized for the problem at hand. And the software will be written better. And we'll use more modern technologies and uh, things like that. Now if we come, so that's autonomy. Now if we look at uh, electrical power and 
it's really that field has really changed over the last few years. Three years ago, electric, electrically powered cars were interesting, but not compelling. Now it appears that most people think they're bound to happen with countries legislating them, companies deciding to switch to them. And at least um, one reason for that is that Tesla's customers are happy. We have a little, in one of these slides, we have a one slide that we have a slide from General Motors explaining the customer reaction to electrical cars, which is not on climate change is actually on now. This is a pretty uh, comfy car. Here for electrical power, probably two of the major problems are batteries. Although even today, Panasonic is making money off its car batteries for the first time. And charging stations. When I drive to the south of Indiana in my electrical car, it's very hard for me to get back because there are no charging stations there. So. Obviously, uh, batteries will get somewhat better, and charging stations will just get deployed. Uh, but for batteries, car batteries are a special type of battery. I think they use the standard lithium ion batteries. Uh, then for other applications like uh, electrical grids, which you need different type of batteries, everything is being explored vigorously. But as I said, there's been huge progress in batteries, and um, that progress is going into today's cars, that progress will continue. So, the next. Uh, All right. Here is a um, article which sort of covers the, uh, the, the scenario that we're describing of the transformation of the automobile and transportation industries. And uh, you can already see from this quote here which side this particular author is on. It is. The end of the traditional automobile, according to this article, which is roughly true, whether it's the beginning of the end or the middle of the end, or uh, I don't think it's the end of the end. There's, there's a long way to go with traditional vehicles yet. But um, and transportation as a service is going to emerge. So this is the moment of truth. Tesla has exploited this moment of truth uh, to have a capital value at the time I speak, nine times that of General Motors, even with fewer employees. And here is, we see to the uh, to the right, some sort of um, signification of the end of the automobile. And here is another one showing the traditional automobile going the way of all things of the past. So let's get going and we'll, we've already discussed in the previous slide the scenario, the next slide just covers the transportation systems industry, which is the emerging industry, covering especially things like ride hailing, but also the general control room of the transportation of the future. Thank you very much. A set of slides, which is on the, on the ride hailing industry, and also on the so-called transportation system. Because the ride hailing industry is more sensitive, not to the actual what driving the car around, though the drivers themselves, it's sensitive to controlling it all. Finding out where the customers are, finding out where the cars are, <coughs> finding out how to route the cars to get to the customers and things like that. And so it's uh, really um, embroiled with the growth of what I call the new sort of transportation system. We can expect to see that everything in this field to be controlled by centralized or cl centralized cloud-based computer systems. It's analogous to the command and control systems military people have, but this doesn't have any particular sinister um, features. It's just trying to make a make it easier to drive by uh, getting information because we're living in this world of the connected car or the, uh, the connective. Um, um, vehicle and we need to get information from all vehicles to all vehicles about the where their hold ups and things like that. And um, this allows you to load balance the cars better on the existing roads and to uh, um, position the cars correctly, if, if, say for right hand to pick up the, the customers that there are. Um, and 
Although transportation system is probably being pioneered by ride hailing, because they must have it today, it's probably a much larger outside ride hailing. And it's sort of linked to the concept of the smart city, or the smart transportation system, or the smart roads. And um, as we move to fewer and fewer human drivers and more and more self-driving systems, we'll probably find it easier to build transportation systems, or at least to make them work effectively, because uh, autonomous vehicles are more likely to obey commands in a, in a predictable fashion. As we put all of this together in some sort of system, we have to worry about the cloud, centralized in the back end, storing all the world's information, um, the edge, the little sensors on the brakes and things like that, and the fog, uh, which for a car is the Tesla or Nvidia or Intel chip that's controlling the car and providing computing, which all the little sensors use. Um, originally, AI was uh, central and it still is centralized on image processing. These images are in various wavelengths, um, like they can be webcams or LiDAR or what have you. It can be sound. Um, and so, but image processing with convolutional neural nets are the dominant technology. Uh, the transportation system also needs AI and it also needs deep learning, but it's a different type of deep learning, it's for time series. Because if you look at the transportation system, it's studying things as a function of time. And we have to do routing, I uh, say we have to analyze these geospatial time series, and that's a rather different set of technologies. It tends to use recurrent neural nets, not convolutional neural nets, and it's uh, equally well established in this deep learning approach, but it's just different. And uh, both of these important uh, types of uh, Deep learning are going to be used in the transportation, mobility, automobile industry of the future. Okay, so this ends the um, overall introduction, and let's um, stop here, and we'll now go on to the two lecture sets.